and I am determined to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm here with my co-host, Alex Brown. What's up, my friend? What's up, Phil? Man, I'm glad to be alive. This is uh, on, Resurrection Weekend. Oh, that's right. That's right. Amen. For a musician, it, it means two things. No <sighs> sleep. <laughs> and, and and number two, no sleep. Uh, it's just, uh, it's a wild day. Are we off? Are we on? Are we still on? Oh, I guess we are still on. We still on? Okay, good, good. Anyway, y'all, it's, it's a wild week coming up, um, but we are gracious and and i'm i've you know the older i get the more i, I appreciate this every easter year. season every year man. you know but you had an early service though you know what i mean you Thanks, got man. That, i appreciate you that. got that 6 a.m yeah, yeah, service yeah, man. Yeah. i know i am the author of that yeah <laughs> but it's not confusion it's, it's, it's all right <laughs> you just it's gotta right. get up it's i got i got up. a couple of services this week as well uh but we have a great show coming up we have maestro theodore thorpe all right who is on his way here we have pastor jeremiah murphy who is a legendary icon in this area and across this country. Yes, he is. Um, so we're going to dig into uh, their lives and what's going on in their ministries and, of course, Theodore's educational pursuits. Mm -hmm. But right now we're going to go to our first video. It is by none other than the icon Stephen Hurd himself, a song called Toda. Ah, yeah, sacrifice enjoy. Sacrifice and pray. Yeah, sacrifice and pray. Enjoy. Father, be blessed. We give you glory. We give thanks. We give you praise. We declare your name is great. Greatly to be praised. We honor you. Thank you for the privilege to celebrate your name. We lift you high in all the earth. High above the earth. High above the earth. We lift In the sanctuary. Marvel at your ways. Hallelujah. In the sanctuary. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to bless his name. Oh, most high. Can we just demonstrate it? Celebrate him tonight. Hallelujah. Everybody. We lift you high in all the earth. High above the earth. In the sanctuary. Lord, we give you glory. glory and As we marvel at your ways. Your ways. We lift our hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the sanctuary. We lift our the scripture says, Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. And we lift our hands and we bless the Lord. Come on, it's Hebrew. It's called Hola. It's the sacrifice of praise. It's the sacrifice of praise. Toda. Toda. Come on, everybody, to the Lord. We lift our hands. We lift our hands. Everybody, Toda. Toda. We bring the sacrifice of praise the sacrifice into of the house praise. of the Lord. Hallelujah. Toda. We lift our hands. We lift our hands. The, the Bible says how good it is for brothers to come together and dwell in unity. We come to this place tonight to lift up the name of the Lord and to celebrate it. We lift you high and on the earth, high and on the earth, high above the earth. We lift our hands, glory to your name, Jesus, in the sanctuary. Oh, we give you glory as we marvel at your ways. We lift our hands. You're a holy God. You're a righteous God. We lift our hands. All that men would praise him for his goodness and his wonderful works to the children of men. I don't know where you are tonight, but I believe he deserves a sacrifice. It's called Tona. Sacrifice of praise. Your hand. He's praying to be praised your hand. in the city of our God, 
in the mountain of his holiness. Release those hands. Come on, stretch those hands. Come on, stretch those hands. Because he's worthy. Because he's faithful. In the body. That you're a holy God of God. And we bring the sacrifice of praise. Come on, with your big voice. Hold up. Hold up. It's just a Hebrew praise. Come on. Come on to his glory tonight. Everybody say. Come on, stretch your hands tonight. Come on, stretch your hands tonight. Stretch your hands. Welcome back to Real Talk. I'm Philip Carter. I am here with none other than the legendary, <laughs> the legendary, <laughs> Pastor Jeremiah Murphy, Murphy, who is the pastor of the Leading Commandment Church of God. And uh, but he's much more than that. He is a retired uh, choral teacher at the Largo High School. Uh, there's so much more to, t to say about him, and we're going to dig into that because I'm going to talk about my student teaching days and what I was really like, whether I was really good or not. <laughs> but, <laughs> but thank you for coming on the show. Oh, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate this. Let's talk about the beginnings. I mean, yes, how sir. did you get started playing the piano and all that? I was nine years old, and we were sitting in church one day waiting for the service to start. I remember this story. Uh -huh. And I said to Evangelist Fanny Jones, I want to learn how to play the piano. And my mother can't find anybody to teach me. So we came up with you. She got up instantly, showed me three chords. That was the beginning. That's it? Mm -hmm. In the key of G flat major. <laughs> wow. mm -hmm. okay. And so you just started playing, period, in church, just like that? Um, I started playing, but I could not hear when they were in a different key other than G flat. Uh -huh. So no matter what they sang, I played <laughs> it in G flat. It had to be in G. <laughs> okay, so the formal lesson, all that? Yes, formal lessons started a year later at the, the Battle Studio of Music. They were on 1251 8th Street Northeast. Oh yeah, Battle's Books and Records? Was yes, sir. Also, I yes, know they sir. had a music studio. They did. I remember Mr. Battle. Yeah. My father took me around to meet him early on. Yeah, wow. those were the great days. So you're a native Washingtonian? Born and raised. All right. McKinley man. High School. Oh yeah, okay. we, we should talk about McKinley. Who was in school during those days with you? Wow, let's see. There was Jerry Gorham from uh -huh. the Refreshing Spring Church of God in Christ. Uh, Crystal Murden from the Star of Bethlehem Church of God in Christ was there with us. Uh, Marvin Matthews, he, he's a national soloist. Uh -huh. There were a lot of people there that were budding along with us in those days. Okay. Now, I first heard about you before I met you. My school teacher um, at Bowie State, out in the street, um, he yes. mentioned your name yeah. while I was taking lessons with him my freshman year. So you've heard of Jeremiah Murphy? He said him, Richard, Myrna. I think Myrna was the youngest. She was like on the bottom end. Yeah, all of them went to McKinley Tech or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was talking about just how great that class of, of, of students were, yeah. musicians were. Yeah. It was just a golden, a golden age during that time. Yeah, it really was. They had a program for, um, they called it the major music program. Uh -huh. And you could prepare for college through that program. And they offered music classes in terms of concert choir, marching band, concert band. Uh, music theory, music history, wow. and when we left there, we had started learning to analyze Bach chorales. Okay. Whoa! Yeah. Before you left high school. Before we left high school. Wow. Where'd you, where'd you go to college? I went to Oberlin College, oh, Oberlin, wow. Ohio. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. okay. yeah. You're a real deal. Uh, <laughs> wow. Well, always has well, been. I haven't heard it put like that before, but I thank you. You got new friends. <laughs> so, bachelor's and master's from Oberlin. Yes, sir. Why did yes, you sir. decide to go to Oberlin? Um, I really didn't want to go there in the beginning. 
But one day it hit me when I was sitting in class. Uh, the chairperson of the department, Mrs. Beatrice Gilks, she mm -hmm. went to her reward about a year ago. Mm -hmm. But she was talking about her alma mater, Oberlin College. Mm -hmm. And it hit me, go home and apply. And so I went home and I, contact, I contacted them. I got the information. And I had really, really prayed for God to send me somewhere where I could get saved. I, I'm from a Pentecostal tradition, right, so I right. wanted to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Right, uh -huh. And um, I had gone after that at home in my home church, and I wasn't ready. Uh -huh. But I went to college and found a wonderful church there. And so I believe all of that had to do with my going to Oberlin. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. and, yes, and so. Together. Amen. All yeah, things. Yeah. Dad was pastoring. My dad was pastor, yes. When did you get called to the ministry? Um, <laughs> most interesting well, How did you get called? Everybody has a different, has a different way. <laughs> Brother, I got a story for everything. Come on, son, <laughs> let's <laughs> talk about it. How did you get the greens at the supermarket? <laughs> 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 um, I, I had come home from college, and I must have been about 19. And the Lord spoke to me as I was going into the house and said, give a word to your father. And um, I went to my daddy and I said, you know, you never allowed us to do that. Mm -hmm. But the Lord has given me something to give to you, a word to say to you. And he said, I said, can I tell you? He said, yes. And I said, you can tell me if it wasn't him, I'll be all right. Mm -hmm. And so the word was simply this. So basic, it was unbelievable that um, whatever the Lord says to you to do, that you do. And he said, oh, yeah, that's him, because I feel him telling me to anoint someone to preach, and I think it's you. Mm -hmm. And I immediately said, no, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be that. No, no, no. He wasn't talking about that, because he told me that. Uh -huh. so, but uh, that was the truth. Um, I told him that, as the Lord had said, and he said, yeah. And I ran from that for 27 years. Wow. 27 years, because I, I didn't want any part of it. I didn't want to do it. It wasn't because I didn't love God, but I didn't want to do that. Right. But finally, he captured me, and I told him maybe about six or seven years prior to hearing the call, I said, I'm willing to do what you say. Mm -hmm. And so he, he, he called me. He told me at one point, he said, my will for your life will make you happy. Mm -hmm. And my happiest days have been since I said yes. Wow. That's a deep story. Yeah, you know. Yeah, wow. Thank God. And Amen. You, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amen. So you became pastor mm -hmm. while you were teaching at Largo. Um, I did. Um, I became pastor in 2008. I'm about to celebrate my 10th anniversary uh -huh. this year. And um, I think I was four years from retirement at Largo. Mm -hmm. Five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I was doing double duty. And on Wednesday mornings, I'd wake up so tired because we right. had Bible class on Tuesday night. I had mm -hmm. to teach Tuesday. I had to go and prepare the lesson and then teach Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. And on Wednesday morning, I was fit to be tied. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. There's so much to get into. Uh, as an educator, um, you know, you, um, you, you pass along just such a legacy to now Brandon Jamal Felder. My goodness. Yes. Yeah, who's, great young who's man. Who's doing a great job. And uh, he's really in an interesting time in PG County because a lot of the um, – the Stallworth teachers have gone. I mean, Leona Lowry has left. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the Stallworth, you know, there's a new generation, and he's really had an interesting time, and he's pushing really hard for, you know, for Largo to do some great things that were done during your age. It's not being received the same way during this age. So, you know, it's just it's just an interesting time, but you laid such a great foundation. So did Dr. Andrews. Yes. But, your found, but your legacy is cemented because there was somebody to follow behind you that had the type of energy and tenacity to carry Largo ahead. So let's talk about Brandon. How proud are you of him? How proud are you of him at this time? You see the grin. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> the grin is the indicator. Um, he is an answer to prayer, quite honestly. I knew a year in advance that I wanted to retire, uh -huh. and I started prepping my students for it. Right. And so um, I started praying for someone, and the people that I had in mind, mm. None of them wanted to do it. And so mm. I didn't know what to do. I just continued praying and seeking those, God about it. You got those big shoes. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> to God be all the glory. All of the glory. And so I got a call one day, one morning, mm -hmm. from Brandon. And, and we already knew one another. And he said, I hear you're leaving. And I'm interested in the position. Mm -hmm. And I said, come on over and let's talk. And the principal told me that I could endorse anyone that I wanted to, and she would talk to him and probably accept them. Mm. And so we talked, and it seemed like he was the one. Mm. It really seemed like it. And so uh, I said to the principal, I think we found somebody. Mm. And it was such smooth sailing after that that it was unbelievable. What was your yeah. biggest advice to him? Like, My advice to him was to allow God to lead him. And that isn't always something that you can say openly in the schoolhouse. Right. Because um, it, it's really not geared toward that. Everybody that loves God feels it and wants it to happen. Mm -hmm. But very few people are willing to say it openly. Mm -hmm. And so 
I, I said to him, you allow God to lead you and you establish your own standard here. You do what you have been sent here to do mm -hmm. and you'll be just fine. And actually I stayed away. Maybe I went there once during the course of the year that he was there because I never wanted to interfere mm -hmm. in what he was attempting to build in that house, mm -hmm. what God was using him for. You know, I, I started to come back to PG County and it's been a it's been a, 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 a tussle with me, but I no longer tussle because they got this spring break taken away this week. I heard only, about yeah, that. You know, yeah. That did something in my spirit. I'm glad I retired. <laughs> I heard the voice this, of God out This spring break is 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 literally three days. Mm -hmm. And you know <laughs> Saturday, Sunday. I'm like Monday Fairfax County is feeling sounding mighty good right now. Hey look, hey, look, man, my feelings are hurt so good. Yeah. Let's move on. I know. <laughs> Tell us about something yeah, else. Yeah. You you teach yeah. you teach in the midst of vacation. You know, yeah. Yeah. Everybody yeah. else. Everybody else. Talk about leading Commandment Church, uh, pastoring. Um, what is the biggest challenge, or some of the biggest challenges in pastoring that particular church? Wow. I just said to them, we worship on Saturdays. So right, I said right. to them on mm -hmm. the Sabbath that um, you know how I feel about you, talking to my saints. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know that there is nothing too good for you in my eyes. I've got some wonderful people, and they are most cooperative. They don't always understand what I'm saying sure. in terms of the vision that I have, but they are willing to walk with me in the vision. Right. Right. And when That's you've got blessing. those kinds of folks, yes, and I, I've got some seasoned saints that did not get saved last Sunday or last Saturday mm -hmm. or Friday <laughs> night. <laughs> but they've been, been walking in for a while. There you go. Right. And so to have people that are younger than me, to have people that are older than me, all willing to follow me. I, I, that's a testament to the greatness of God. That is not Jeremiah Murphy. Mm -hmm. Never has been, never mm -hmm. will be, but it is the work of God. Wow, yes. and you all are doing some unique things. I, mem I, I think I remember you saying something about you teaching uh, music lessons. Yes, we mm -hmm. did start that. Uh, we were offering drum and piano lessons mm -hmm. after our service, and it was free for anybody that wanted to come and receive. Mm -hmm. And that went over pretty well. Mm -hmm. until the weather started changing. Right, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you gonna pick it back up? Uh, yeah, we want to. And whenever somebody says, I want this, we wanna offer that to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome, that's all. I mean, you're just doing some phenomenal things. Pass of a church, retired school teacher. Uh, you even told me, I think I believe was driving Uber one time, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How you enjoy that? Wow. You know what? I I meet some interesting people, and I have gotten the chance to witness uh, some young people got in my car not long ago, and they were talking some interesting conversations, mm -hmm. and sure. they asked me what I thought because I was minding my business, you know, <laughs> <laughs> driving, you know, and so um, I told them, and they listened, mm -hmm. and when they were getting out of the car, I said, "Now you need to read this scripture," mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they said, "Okay." Hmm. So that made the night worthwhile. I could have gone home then. Let me let me mm -hmm. ask you a question. Being being a former school teacher and a pastor, what advice would you have to people who are trying to, I guess, uh, delve between the two realms? So if somebody who is a current teacher or educator, and they they also want to pastor a church, well, do you have any advice or anything that you could give them? Yes, um, because yeah. I know it's I know it's difficult. So yeah, it's a task, yeah. but very clearly you, you cannot preach Jesus Christ in the schoolhouse, mm -hmm. but there's a way to get him over. I, I asked God to help me to love my students okay. from my heart, mm -hmm. to love them from my heart, and then to live an example before them. Mm -hmm. Wasn't perfect every day. Some <laughs> days I lit that room up, uh -huh. but mm -hmm. I thank God hey. that I believe he I helped me like to you. live. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I lift that place up. Yeah, man. But uh, I, I still say to anybody that wants to do that, just be sure that you're prayed up. And I could tell the days when I wasn't prayed up. Mm -hmm. I could tell. I could tell it sometimes when I got there. One morning, the Lord brought it to me so clearly. Why don't you stop beating your head against that brick wall? I said, what? And I knew what he was talking about, you mm -hmm. know, for me to just calm down and mm -hmm. come on in. And when I would do that, the day would be so smooth. Okay. Yeah, always, always smooth. Yeah, so just follow God, teachers, pastors. Hey, we're gonna try to we we gonna we gonna try to follow God. Yeah. Um, I have an interesting question for you. You worship God on the Sabbath day, Saturday. How how can a person who goes to church Sunday or a pastor goes to church Sunday? How do you bridge the gap in fellowship? I, and and you're one of the people who do it. I know some others who do it. But how do you bridge the gap in fellowship, even though you may have some 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 scriptural differences in how you worship? 
Yeah, this yeah. past week, one of my good friends, one of my good friends, Pastor William Swan uh -huh. of the Resurrection Life Fellowship Church, they're a church that worships on Sundays. Mm -hmm. He came and he was our principal speaker for our afternoon service, and we had a wonderful time mm -hmm. together. And so my notion is, and I say this to my congregation, that regardless of what we believe, mm -hmm. we love. Right. We Amen. must love. Whatever people do is their decision, their choice. Mm -hmm. We're doing what is our choice. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so ultimately, we must love everybody. That's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. When the day ends, did you love? Mm -hmm. When they roll you up front mm -hmm. and talk about you, did Come you love? Mm -hmm. Okay, when they put the stone over the dirt that's on you, did you love? Mm -hmm. And God is love, so if we have him, then that's what should be displayed anyway. Mm. I think, uh, and that's, that's an excellent answer. I'm just jumping on, just jumping things. I have things that come through my mind. A, lo um, a lot of people in this area, in the, the DMV area, have no idea of how much of an excellent musician you are. You know, when I first got to Largo as a student teacher, I was like, this man is, can, I mean, he's, he's blazing over here. <laughs> you know, you'd be sitting in the office playing the keyboard, or you'd be playing the piano, or whatever. <laughs> But you are an excellent musician, and I, and I guess, who are your musical influences? I know one of them, yes, for sir. sure. <laughs> they are, beyond a shadow of any reasonable doubt, Henry Mackenzie Davis yes. and Richard Smallwood. Mm. Those guys are so phenomenal at the keyboard, and they're awesome writers. They're just musicians extraordinaire. And the first time I heard both of them, I think I was like 15 mm -hmm. years of age, and they mesmerized me then. Mm. And even today, I tell people, Henry taught me a three-chord progression when I was about 17, and I still play it today. Yeah, <laughs> oh, believe me. <laughs> I had a chance to play with him at the GMWA one year, and mm -hmm. it was just the highlight of my life. It really was. Oh, yeah. We did a recording with the Mass Choir, and I was like, I was sitting here saying, I'm here. I'm sitting here on the organ beside Henry Mackenzie Davis. And to this day, you know, he's he's just been a, a he's a, he's a true blue person too yes. as well. Yes. And so is Richard. You know, Richard, oh, he's, he's much shyer than Henry is, but mm -hmm. he's, he's he's true blue as well. <laughs> uh, were you a follower of Pearl Williams Jones? I was. Yes. I was. Jesus lover of my soul at the piano. That's where everybody got it yes, from. Yes, indeed. I'm to, I, I mean, she was, woo. <laughs> yes. I have yes. her album at home, and um, it's, she's just amazing. She was amazing. Yeah, and a genuinely nice person mm -hmm. when I talk to her. Just a genuinely mm -hmm. nice person. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So you got some future um, artist plans as an artist? Or? Um, yes, I have been working for a couple of years now on a new album. Um, it's going to be a solo piano project, mm -hmm. and I wanted it out last year mm -hmm. and this year. Mm -hmm. okay. So maybe next year. <laughs> yeah. So for everybody who's watching this broadcast and who will be watching it, what are some of your hobbies that we may not know about? Some things about Jeremiah Murphy that we don't know about. I like to travel. Like to travel? I really do. Places really you haven't do. been yet? Um, places I haven't been. South America. Well, let me tell you. And, oh, problem. yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you see I'm listening, right? <laughs> no, no, yeah. no. You know. Continue, continue, continue. Yeah. South America, Alaska. Alaska? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'd like wow. to go. Wow. You in the sports at all? I actually am only in it. I watched the Super Bowl for the halftime show. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right? And so after that, it's over. Okay. Mm -hmm. What would you think of this year's halftime show? Um... It was interesting, and the reason I say that mm -hmm. was because I expect the music to be the music, mm -hmm. and I expect it to be the focal point of the function, mm -hmm. but it, it, it appeared to me, and this is personal, you know, and this mm -hmm. is not a front against anybody, <laughs> right, right. because we must love. Right, right. Okay. right. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I kind of felt like the acrobatics and the, the, the calisthenics mm -hmm. and all of those kinds of things sort of overrode the music. Okay. Gotcha. And that was a concern for me. Okay. Wow, that, you know, that's one of the best synopsis I've heard. Well, some, well, sometimes people need all that. So they don't have to oh, yeah. you know, actually do the actual job. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, we do that in church. Even if that song is not good, we can run and do flips. Oh, yeah. We can make it work. Yeah. 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 Run so listen, the wall. <laughs> lastly, um, advice for young musicians. Yes. Um, I'm, 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 you know, I'm a young musician and I'm, I'm playing in church and I may endeavor, I may even, you know, endeavor to do an album or two one day or produce or play for some major artist. What is your advice for a person like that right now? 
for musicians young and preachers young, educate yourself. Mm. Um, I, I think that we have made a very grave mistake in our churches by telling our children when they go get on those keyboards between services, get off of there, you know, that mm. kind of thing. I think that we need to take time with them and instruct them. Somebody did that with me, and it made a difference in my life. Right. And so we have to make sure that we're nurturing mm. them and bringing them forward. And along with educating yourself with the most recent songs on the radio, go back and learn those hymns that Grandma sang. I did a service just New Year's Eve. And I did, I play a song called the Yezu Medley and it's got mm -hmm, some mm -hmm, hymns and things mm -hmm. in there. And the pastor's mother, who was 80 years old, this was Bishop Charles Doom's mother. Mm -hmm, she right. called for me to come where she was sitting and I went over there and I said, yes ma'am, yes ma'am. Mm -hmm. And she said, I enjoyed you because you played songs that I knew. Mm. Now if that doesn't bring a tear to your eye, I don't know <laughs> what would. My heart went out Praise to that Lord. mother. So learn those hymns, learn those old songs and couple everything you're learning Put it together, and maybe we'll have something new in the next generation. Right. Um, Easter, resurrection, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. Um, for me this week, it's a reflection on the declining numbers in the church. Um, I have been thinking about this all day today. I wanted to have this conversation with you before we end it. Um, to me, it's a burden. I'm, I'm actually seeing him. I'm seeing in my lifetime people leaving the church. Um, I've never seen it before. My dad has never seen it before. Uh, he's kind of noticing himself, but what is the remedy right now? Or is there a remedy for uh, the pastor, the congregation, the leadership, the lay people? Um, how do we approach this day in getting people back, back into the church? We have done, I think, all that we can. And don't think I'm giving up the ship. That's not mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Hear me out. We have done all that we can to get people in. We have given away free food. Mm -hmm. We have sponsored trips where they had to pay little or nothing for. Mm -hmm. We have done this, we have done that, we have done the other. But if we put the emphasis on Jesus Christ and people find out they need him, mm -hmm. they'll be back. Mm -hmm. Right now, unlike our grandparents and great grandparents, People can buy their own cars and their own houses. Mm -hmm. And right now, people need Jesus not for a whole lot in mm -hmm. their minds. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately, if we can get them to see that carnal things, earthly things, do not constitute spiritual wealth. Mm -hmm. If we can get them to see that Jesus Christ is the Lord and what he brings is better than a Mercedes, I've driven one, but he's better, okay? Yeah. Better than an Escalade. Yeah. I've driven one, he's better. Mm. If we can get them to see that the peace of mind and the joy on the inside that Jesus Christ brings is better than all of that, yeah. then they'll come back. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining. Oh, sir. God joining bless you. us. Thank you. Um, you've been a blessing. You. Thank you so much. You've been a blessing to this city. Um, you've been a blessing to a lot of young people who are now so probably right. not so young, but they can, <laughs> but you've been a, but you have just been an immense blessing. And I know many people in this area and across this country, wherever they are, would like to say thank you. So on behalf of all of them, thank you for your service. We wish you, we, we wish you many more years and whatever you decide you. to do. And we pray that God will give you, uh, whatever he desires for you in his will and that he will, and that you will continue to follow along in what he's blessed you with. Amen. Thank you. Uh, amen. amen. I receive that in <laughs> Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to go Thank to Jeremiah Murphy's song, which has blessed a lot of people. It's one of my favorites. It's called The Lord is in This Place. <laughs> you all enjoy this song.
welcome back to Real Talk. Um, I do want to mention um, one of our guests, two of our guests, Dr. Charles and Cynthia Williams, were scheduled to be on the show today, but their daughter uh, is in labor, I believe, and so uh, they couldn't make it. So we just want to say a prayer for her that God will, will hold her up and that that baby will be born uh, in good health. Uh, in Jesus' name, we pray. Um, so we just... We will have Dr. Williams back at a later time. Uh, he was a, uh, He's a very interesting guest that I know you all will enjoy. But I'm here right now with my uh, good friend, uh, colleague, uh, Brother Theodore Thorpe, who is, I mean, you're talking about somebody that's just taking this city by storm. Oh, God bless you. Uh, Theodore Thorpe is doing a major, major work, not just in uh, the life of the church, uh, but he's also doing a major work in education in music education. So, Theodore, welcome to the show. Thank you oh, for God joining us. So happy um, to be here. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. For He's the choral director at T.C. Williams. He's also, uh, I'm not sure what your title is, at, uh, at Alpha Street. Music director. Music director at uh, Alpha Street Baptist Church. I was going to give you some grand title, you know. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Second to the apostle oh, no, of music. <laughs> <laughs> of music. <laughs> but uh, Alpha Street, of course, is doing great things under the uh, leadership of Dr. Joyce Garrett yes. and so many great musicians over there, Melvin Bryant, Marcus. Uh, it's just it's just a great time to be uh, at, at Alpha Street, mm -hmm. amen. Oh yeah. So uh, let's talk about your beginnings. Um, how did you get started in music? How did I get started in music? Uh, I started playing piano at the age of four. Mm -hmm. um, watching my my dad uh, at the piano, sit at the piano. Started practicing at the at the age of four. Formal training uh, at the age of five. Mm -hmm. um, and who was your first piano teacher? Who was my first piano teacher? My yeah. father. Your father, okay. My father. Um, I completely idolized him. You know, he's mm -hmm. no longer with us. He passed in, right. this past December. Right. Um, so everything that I did in life was always trying to make him, my mother, proud. Mm -hmm. um, funny thing about studying piano um, is I, I told my students all the time, I was one that hated to practice. I hated to practice. <laughs> I mean, I loathe practice. <laughs> I mean, when I would come home, you know, before I could go out on the street and play football with the rest of the guys, I would have to come home, do homework for an hour, then practice for an hour, and then I could go out and play football. Well, let's start by then. Yeah, but I, and I had to be in by the street light. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so my goodness. you could tell that window of opportunity to play. But um, what I learned from that is that um, I thank my parents for making me practice. Right. Because um, it's paid off. Right. I mean, tremendously. Um, and I tell students and parents all the time, if you see a gift in your child, mm -hmm. it's your responsibility to foster that. It's a responsibility. It's a responsibility mm -hmm. right. to foster that gift. Because when time of judgment comes and God says, where's the gift that I gave you? <laughs> you asked for that son or you asked for that daughter. Mm -hmm. Where's the gift that I've given you? What have you done with that gift? So. Where, where where did it turn when you when it no longer became a challenge to practice? When you stopped loathing, you was like, uh, you, you accepted it. You know what? Um, and I didn't learn this until later, mm -hmm. um, but my mother shared with me um, that it's one thing when you get your child to practice and they may not like it um, at first, but what she said that stuck with me is she said, I lost myself in the music. Mm -hmm. And once she saw that, mm -hmm. she knew there was no way she was not going to foster that. Or just, you know, some parents will say, okay, well, you'll try something else. Mm -hmm. You'll try tennis. You'll try something else. Mm -hmm. But once she said, once she saw me at the piano and I lost myself in the music, mm -hmm. she knew that it was her responsibility to keep me going. Was your dad a church musician, too? He was. He was a conductor. Okay. Um, was conducting all over New York, um, specifically Handel's Messiah. Okay. Um, you get it honestly, then. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's it's no mailman it, there. Yeah, like, it's yeah. it's strange uh, the way our lives paralleled. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's photos of him conducting forty years ago, the same things that I've conducted, you know, forty years later. Mm -hmm. um, how he met my mother is the same way I, I met my wife. It's, it's just eerie, mm -hmm. you know. But I, instead of saying eerie, it's just God's design. Right. Um, and so um, my parents are the source. Uh, they've um, instilled in, within me uh, the desire to not just um, thrive, um, but to to strive for, for greatness. For, because striving after perfection is striving after God. So mm -hmm. I hear the Lord saying, um, 
you're living their legacy and God's will at the same time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's amazing. Absolutely. So you started playing at uh, age four, mm -hmm. formal lessons at age five. When did you know that this is what you're going to do for the rest of your life? <laughs> That's a good question um, because, uh, ironically, a lot of people don't know this. Mm -hmm. um, I went to school um, as a biology major. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I went to school as a biology major because, <laughs> you know, coming up when I was coming up, you know, it was still said that you're not going to make any money in music. Right. Uh -huh. I don't know what you're going to do, you know, how you're going to support yourself, let alone a wife and a child. Mm -hmm. um, do that as a side hunt. You need to work with this, this right. stethoscope. Yeah, this you need to work with this steth steth stethoscope. You need mm -hmm. to go either be a doctor or a lawyer. And so I can remember my freshman year, it was about 150 of us in that stadium seating in that biology one-on-one class. The professor said, um, look to your left, look to your right. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Next semester, half of you won't be here. <laughs> and next semester, we went from 150 to 70. Mm. And I, I can remember specifically uh, one student, a, good, a really good friend of mine, mm -hmm. um, who decided not to pursue biology and pursue mm -hmm. music and uh, vocal performance. Mm -hmm. And uh, you may know her, Brandy Sutton, okay. uh, wonderful um, uh, coloratura soprano. Wow. Um, and is now on, you know, uh, performing the Metropolitan Opera now. Mm -hmm. And the professor said to her as she was walking out to change her major to music, mm -hmm. you know only one in one million really make it. Wow. She turned back to him and said, I'll be that one. Mm. Come on now. <laughs> and so when you know what God has desired for mm -hmm. you, and when you find what your purpose is, mm -hmm. um, you can't let anybody stop you. Um, and so I would dare say that I found my purpose probably a little later. Mm -hmm. I still held on to biology. Right. right. Um, a lot of people was like, why do you keep holding on to this? You know, you know I'm always thinking my parents sent me here mm -hmm. to study biology. No, and then I made changes. I wanted to be a cardiologist, and I wanted to be a dentist. <laughs> I mean, well, you, you was know, following the money. Yeah, you know, so I'm like, because, you know, at the time, I was I was in the Aeolians. Right. So I was in the Aeolians all, all, for, all for four and a half years mm -hmm. there. Um, so I was still gravitating to the music department. Even right. though I was walking across campus the biology right. department, I would still go over there, practice mm -hmm. in the practice room. Mm -hmm. I joined the Aeolians, mm -hmm. um, and I, I became a music minor. Mm -hmm. And then... Mm -hmm. Um, it just switched. I said, you know what? I'm just going to follow my passion. Mm. I'm just going to follow it. And I switched, and I became a biology minor, and mm. I became a music major. Let's bring our audience up. Okay, you're a native of Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Crown uh, Heights. Lifelong SDA? Lifelong. So SDAs, a lot of SDAs go to Oakwood University mm -hmm. to study. And with the other one is Pine Forge, right? Pine Forge Academy. Pine Forge, okay. And you joined the Aeolians, and you were a biology major. I was a biology major. You just, and you came up the ghost eventually and became... A music major. But it, a funny thing is it didn't even stop there. I was actually on my way to dental school. Is that right? You, I was. You, you, <laughs> this is, a, this is turning into I'm comedy. I'm trying to tell you. I, I so got what, is, what is your degree? Right. 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 I actually, I was taking the DAT, uh -huh. uh, dental admissions test, and I, I was accepted on my way into University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Mm -hmm. um, and I told Jay Bumai, I said, you know what? I want to go to grad school for music. Is that right? Yep. Wow. Okay, so answer this. Okay, I didn't step into a Seventh-day Adventist church until I was in college. Mm. I was strikingly surprised. So you need to answer this question for me as a person who didn't realize this until college. What is it that the Adventists do with musicians and singers? That uh, There's so many of them that are great. What is the formula? It, it's, it's a funny question question because um, culture is mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. and especially in the, in the Seventh-day Adventist church you have a, a breadth of talent mm -hmm. um, but the culture is, is that every child grows up learning the hymns mm -hmm. they understand they know all the about hymns that. and they, they grow up listening to barbershop quartets they mm -hmm. start their own quartets I remember I had a group in seventh grade mm -hmm. it was four guys and that was just the culture. So you start singing, you start working together, you start arranging. We got kids now that are arranging in fifth and sixth grade. Mm -hmm. I mean, through composed pieces. And so the culture was iron sharpened iron. Mm -hmm. And so when you have a conglomerate, if you will, of all this talent from all over the United States, all over the world, coming to this one institution uh, at Oakwood University, I mean, you're exposed to so much. Right. People like Whitley Phipps, Take Six, Sure, Wong, sure. Um, so many people who have come 
Brian McKnight that have come out of Virtue, right? Virtue. Yeah, I remember. I remember. That have come Kirk Whalen. Kirk Whalen. Yeah. I mean, we, John Stoddard. So, right. many, you know, so you're exposed to all of this. Mm -hmm. And so, and it's not like, oh, that's that was cool. I had a great experience. No, you're like, you're soaking it in, and I'm going back to the keyboard. What the day did they <laughs> right, do? Right, what right, was right, that right. chord he played? What was that transition? Okay, we got to get in the, we're going to get five guys in the bathroom. We're going to figure this out, because, you know, in the bathroom, we need, <laughs> right, we right. need acoustics. acoustics. Right, right, right. So we're going to figure, and it was just this insatiable desire to want to expose yourself to all of, of the, um, idiosyncrasies of sacred music mm. whether wow. that was sacred classical meets gospel mm. or you know some of the more contemporary mm. styles of worship um so it was just this insatiable desire to want to um be so so great Where's when did that? you get into gospel when did i get into gospel <laughs> um at a, at a very early age okay um mm -hmm. you know growing up in, uh, growing up in church choirs uh, I started in this uh, choir called Child of the King Choir, where it was just this huge uh, children's choir. Mm -hmm. But it was called children's choir, but it was ages 10 through like 17, mm -hmm. all the way up. Choir director, and then you just see uh, how a choir director can shape mm -hmm. music and inspire so many kids who would could easily be on the street. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I grew up in the 90s where... Bloods on this side, Crips on this side. You could easily be mm -hmm. doing anything else. And so in church and coming to a rehearsal on a Friday night, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, teenagers doing that. Mm -hmm. So you, you, I grew up in that at a very early age. So who, so who, who are your heroes, musical heroes? Ooh. Some of them. Uh, in, specifically in sacred music? No, or, it could be any, anything. I mean, I'm, I'm listening to everybody. Um, recently. Recently? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I got to call Darren Atwater out. Oh, absolutely. Uh, he's a, f a big friend and a mentor, a visionary, uh, and a musical genius. Mm -hmm. um, when I look to sacred uh, classical aspects of gospel music, uh, there's no one else I, I consider higher than Richard. Richard mm -hmm. Smollett, absolutely. Um, when classical meets gospel music. Uh, and then you have some of the greatest choirs in the world. From, I grew up on James Hall mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Brooklyn. Um, mm -hmm. all, you know, James Hall, Worship and Praise. James Hall, nobody had vibrato before James oh, Hall. No, listen. <laughs> Ricky Dillon, like Ricky I can Dillon Dillon Dillon, but, but, but James Hall had a special. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, James had a certain sound. Ricky had a certain sound. Right, right. You know, and so you kind of splice all of that together. Right, right. And then when I got in the Aeolians, mm. that was another level. Of it music. is. It, it still is. Yeah. It is another level. Um, I think the Aeolians are the greatest choir in America. I really do. I would definitely stand by that. I, I, so, uh, Jason Ferdinand is a real good friend of mine. Yes. And he's doing amazing work. Yes. With those yes. And next time you come to town, you know, uh, I need y'all to stop past uh, <laughs> my Baptist church because <laughs> Aeolians are just, I mean, I just want, I need to fall out. You know, I need to fall out one time. <laughs> Musicians fall out when we hear certain things. You know, it's, 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 it's that, that note, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That those, those harmonies, yeah. the way things progress, how things are put together, right. really ministers to us in a different way than a, than a person that's not musical, mm -hmm. per se. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about T.C. Williams. I want to spend this, this these moments on T.C. Williams because what you have done there, I don't know how you did it, I don't know how you got started, I don't know how you built the program, but I'm sure there was a journey. But what you're doing at T.C. Williams is very, very special. Okay, God bless you. Uh, let's talk about T.C. Williams. I mean, how did things get, how did you build that program? Well, it's funny you ask that question because I'm actually working on my first book, mm -hmm. um, and it's called uh, "The Seven Steps to Choral Success." Mm. Wow. But I the like tag that. is "Breaking a Culture to Build One." Okay. Because I, I truly believe that in order to build a culture, you have to go through the breaking first, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the breaking is the hardest part. Mm -hmm. um, so when I got to TC, and there was like maybe twenty-five, thirty people in the entire. Now you're talking about a school. 3,500 students. Right. The largest high school probably in the state of Virginia. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, the, and the only one in the city of Alexandria. And I, and I had a program of maybe about 32. Mm -hmm. There were like six guys in the wow. entire program. Mm -hmm. And when I told that those students that we were going to be the best choir in the state and we were going to have after school practices mm -hmm. and they're looking at me like, how you looking at me now? Right, right, right. <laughs> like, you talking about us? Right, right. You know, and so the first couple of years were the hardest. Mm -hmm. Establishing that culture that there's a standard that we're going to uphold and it's you probably won't see it within the first year or two right um but you'll notice the, the dividends after year three year four with students coming in freshmen understanding your culture um i also started our boosters program there, there it is, is which is i got it was three or three or four parents at the time mm -hmm. and three or four parents came up to me and said listen we can help you Mm -hmm. Let's start this. And we've got lawyers need. involved, That's and we became need. a 501c3. Mm -hmm. And now it's paying 
back the dividends right, right. Um, itself. You know, we used to operate with maybe like we said, we'll probably take about ten thousand dollars to run the whole school year. Mm -hmm. You know, now that's probably sixty, seventy thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And so to see how it has um, completely grown over the over the past eight years and going into season number nine, yeah, mm -hmm. it was like wow. Right, what these nine <laughs> years? Yeah, what these nine years go? Um, but the beautiful thing, if, if I could put it in a nutshell, is um, I would say. For me, the beauty is watching growth Absolutely. and learning mm -hmm. um, over accolades or achievement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we can conflate the two. Right. Um, but it should always be about growth and learning. Right. Um, because some of the things that we teach in the classroom are transferable. Mm -hmm. They'll never forget them. Wow. Um, and so that's, that's the beauty of it is watching them from their ninth grade, you know, budding all the way through their 12th See. grade. Right. And I tell those parents... Let them stick with me in the whole program. Don't let them take another class. Let them come in and watch them grow. Mm -hmm. Watch them get to their senior year and their senior, you know, we have a, um, a senior awards banquet every year where the seniors get to sing their final song and mm -hmm. goodbye. And it's, it's an emotional one. Yeah, every time. Emotional <laughs> I know it is. <laughs> and that, for me, is the joy of it. Right. That lets me know I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I right. Need to, I need to get to high school. <laughs> <laughs> you all are doing a fundraiser right now. Let's we talk are, about that. We are. Um, we are traveling. Um, we've been blessed. Um, we just had our local festival, uh, and it was a blessing. All three of my groups for the for the eighth consecutive year all got superior ratings. So proud of those those students. And so we are traveling to Florida, Orlando, to the Disney Call Festival. Haven't been there since my first year. Mm -hmm. And um, this year we're actually flying. So talk mm -hmm. about growth. Mm -hmm. When it was like, okay, we're we going to put, I'm going to write this little last check and we're going to put it in there. Uh -huh. Nobody sees what I'm doing. You uh -huh. know? Uh -huh. Goose is always slapping me on the hand. Please don't put your own money. You know, uh -huh. but to get a bus to go to Florida to now we're trying to fly. Mm -hmm. And so we, we fly out on, on April 5th. Uh, the trip is 5th, April 5th to the 8th. So that Aeolians concert you were talking about was a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. We had a couple fundraisers uh, in the in the local uh, Alexandria community to help. Um, Do y'all still need money? Yes. we. How uh, can we, people uh, give? Oh, thank you so much. They can go on to tcwilliamschoir.com. tcwilliamschoir.com. And every, every single page, you'll see a little button that says how to give. <laughs> <laughs> we're not playing around. It's any, any way you can. You can become a sponsor. I like the fact that you have immersed T.C. Williams, which in my eyes, you know, is I'm not sure what the makeup, um, what the racial makeup is, but you have immersed them into some of the African-American church culture. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to congratulate you for that. Oh, wow. Because wow. Most, most of the time, you know, a teacher would probably just shy away from that. Mm -hmm. We all know Virginia schools to be a, a, pre, a predominantly Eurocentric uh, ideas, Eurocentric methods, and in terms of music, very Eurocentric too. Yep. But you brought a different, uh, like you said, break to build. You know, that's, yeah. that's look, yeah. that's Bible. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing about it, and as you, as you know well, uh -huh. in the public schools, there's a limitation in uh -huh. terms of what you can say. You know? Right, right. Um, but I try to live the example. Amen. You know, um, um, I always tell parents, you know, my classroom mm. is not uh, a structure for indoctrination, but you should be able to tell that I love these students from my heart mm -hmm. and the way I live and the way right. I carry myself. Right. Um, so if we they meet me on the street, then they may want to ask, well, who's this God that you serve? Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. um, and so that that is, is when you teach from your heart, it's, you know, it's... Absolutely, it's, absolutely. It's I gotta, authentic. I got to come by and see you more often. My brother's over there with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Every I got to come by and get some tips because I'm, you know... Where I'm at, uh, it's a it's a wonderful school to be at, but it's it's not quite the program that you got going on. And, oh, wow. and sometimes iron sharp is iron. You just yeah. need to see something yeah. greater, yeah. so it can inspire you to do greater things. Yeah. Um, at West Potomac, you know, we are dealing with what everybody's doing. Yeah. You know, yeah. we we're dealing yeah. with school violence and yeah. and yeah. the threat, the potential threat of school violence and all that. And we need encouragement. Yeah. yeah. You know, we need inspiration as teachers. And a lot of people are talking about students, you know, protecting students, but yeah. teachers need protection too. Yeah, that's right. We want to be able to go home to our our families yeah. and our children as well. So I want to congratulate you for being one of those beacons of light oh, bless you, bless you. in the Northern Virginia oh, area. I can't take all the credit. Um, I got to shout out my wife. Well, oh, absolutely. Um, Jennifer Thorpe, um, she is my rock. She's absolutely okay. every step of the way. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so she, if, if she wasn't here, she should be sitting right here. Hey, well, so we, we, need to, we need to bring her on next time. Oh, yeah. Y'all can tell yeah, us right. all how to stay oh, yeah. married. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. play music. He Ooh. sound like he's going to get in the house tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she might let him in. She's let him in tonight. <laughs> Just <laughs> might. Just <laughs> might. Let's talk about Alpha Street in, in our last few moments together. How did you get to Alpha Street? Woo. 
Um, everybody knows who Joyce Gad is. Absolutely. Joyce Gad. I would say she's one of the four, maybe four or five individuals that has the keys to the city musically. Mm-hmm. She is the most phenomenal person you will ever meet. Um, and she took a chance on a young 23-year-old mm-hmm. right out of undergrad. Mm. Um, and, and I think she always tells a story that Tommy Tyler called her. Mm-hmm. He said, I have this young musician who just came out of Oakwood. He's mm-hmm. in the area. Uh, he hasn't gone to grad school yet, but he's looking. Um, and I actually went on Craigslist, but to um, tell you the truth, and there was an opening uh, for a position at the Washington Youth Choir, mm-hmm. which was an after-school music right. program that mm-hmm. she started mm-hmm. after she retired from Eastern. Mm-hmm. And I applied, and um, she found out there was a board that we interviewed, and she called me one day. She said, I want you to just come by the house. You know, I just, <laughs> I said, I just want you to come by the house. Let's talk. And um, she said, yeah, we have an opening at, uh, at my church, and it the way it has shifted, I came be even for the new pastor. And he's getting ready to celebrate 10 years. Mm. So I've been at Alpha Street 12 years. Mm. So that church family has watched me grow from a boy into a man. Mm. They watched me get married. Mm. They watched me find my first home. Um, and I've, I've been in that ministry, and it has been a blessing. They have been a blessing to me, and it, it is it is. I, would, I couldn't go anywhere else. Mm-hmm. You still serve at the SDA Church, too? I actually don't serve in the SDA Church. That's mm-hmm. where I worship. I worship mm-hmm. at the Restoration Praise Center, Seventh Day Adventist Church, where Paul Graham is the senior pastor. Where is it located? It is located uh, in Bowie, Maryland. Okay. Um, okay. Melvin Bryant also serves there. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I heard I heard the name for some reason. Yeah. 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 So um, a lot of times on, on Sabbath, I really just, really just try to. Mm. Do what the Bible says and just rest. Amen. <laughs> I try to. Amen. Um, although I'm being pulled in so many different directions, uh, I'm still trying to find that center of not just trying to be busy. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and still give God the time that He is. How do Adventists? Because I've I, because ever since I served at a, at, at a um, Seventh Day Adventist church, I have studied Adventists and Adventism. Um, how do Adventists observe the Sabbath now? You know, back in the day, they had a whole bunch of strict rules. But how do you do it now, like from Friday night to Saturday night? I mean, you know, how do you rest in this in this big area and, you know, all of, all this stuff that's going on? Yeah, it, it is tough. I mean, from from a biblical perspective, it is from, from sunset to sunset, mm-hmm. in the evening in the morning, mm-hmm. just the next day. So mm-hmm. um, Sabbath begins um, sunset Friday to mm-hmm. uh, sunset Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, 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 it can be challenging. Um, you just have to prepare leading up to Sabbath. Mm-hmm. So you do a lot of things on Thursday evenings. You try mm-hmm. to get the home ready. Um, and because you know how much you're going to be doing as a musician over the mm-hmm. weekend. Mm-hmm. And so it's that, that dichotomy that exists. Well, I'm resting, but I'm serving at the same time. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I'm serving all weekend long. Yeah, I'm serving yeah, yeah. Sabbath morning. Uh-huh. I'm serving Sunday for church, you know. And so they always say the musician Sabbath is Monday morning. Mm-hmm. So, unless you're teaching. <laughs> Future it. plans? Our uh, future plans, um, we talked, we, we mm-hmm. definitely want to record. Mm-hmm. We definitely want to record. Um, uh, I'm trying to make it to 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and my kids are always like, no, you got to be there to 10 years so we can do a 10-year anniversary right, concert. Right, right. You know, and it's keeping pressure. I mean, I got kids that got kids now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I got kids that are in PhD programs and still <laughs> calling me and say, do not go anywhere until we do 10 years. So I would like to record um, and just, I think that would be a staple uh, to put... Um, uh, just as a as a group, uh, um, a beacon of light for the T C Williams High School. Uh, they always say our music programs are the are the programs that show um, the best and the brightest of our of our of our student population. So I would love I would love to record hobbies other than music. Hobbies other than music. Um, <laughs> I'm a movie connoisseur. Mm-hmm. Well, I, uh, I saw the uh, Black Panther, yeah, the whole out, yeah. the whole, you know. I mean, I go all in. There you go. I mean, Lord of the Rings, I mean, I'm going all in. Yeah, I have man. Lord of the Rings watch parties, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, all that. So, but um, I, I definitely love, um, I'm a people person, so I love to entertain. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a big foodie. I'm a big big sports guy. Go Tar Heels. So okay. glad that Duke went down. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm all the way, all the way sports. 
That's awesome, man. Well, look, thank you so much for being on this oh, program. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so um, much for having me. It's been a blessing to have you. Y'all go online and donate to T.C. Williams. God bless My you. wife just bless passed you. me a note here saying that Dr. Williams and his uh, his daughter had a baby boy. Oh, uh, So praise God. Praise, praise God. God for them. And we look forward to having you back, man. And oh, we just wish you, so you the much. best in all your endeavors. May God bless you. Thank of course, you. God bless as you. people tell me, and it still does not yet appear. Mm. It's not yet appear. What, what you shall be. God bless you. Amen. One of these days, we're going to be like him. Oh. That's and you know, the older to. I get, the more I'm looking forward now to actually having an encounter, of, uh, a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus Christ. You know, mm -hmm. I want to see the person who has brought me this far, mm -hmm. who, has we'll who, who has delivered yeah. me from my mess. Yeah. And I tell Alice all the time on the phone, we preach to each other all the time. Mm -hmm. So you know, I preached my, I preached my <laughs> initial sermon long before I became a preacher. <laughs> but I tell him, I said, you know, at the end of the file cabinet, when the Lord pulled, when he rose the file cabinet, I hope the last folder says grace. Mm. And with that being said, you all have a great week on Real Talk with Philip Carter. We'll see you again soon. For more information on how to become a guest on Real Talk with Philip Carter, or for general inquiries, please email us at realtalkwithphilipcarter at yahoo.com. Tune in next Monday for another edition of Real Talk with Philip Carter.